diversity, equity, and inclusion for the Culture Club. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938, Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, Guam's leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, she was ready for a life after high school. A 17-year-old who died in a drowning in the waters off Manilao, now being remembered for the quick actions she took to save others out in the deep water. Plus, the results of a runoff election are in. The CNMI ready for new leadership to take over in the new year. The incumbent governor conceding, sharing his respect for his challenger and the office he will now have to hand over. And from the stores to the online sales, Cyber Monday is here. Matsuki Hiriyama with a report on what shoppers need to know to get gifts here in time and under the Christmas tree by December 25th. Hafid and good evening everyone. I'm Nick Delgado. Welcome to Primetime. Great to have you starting your week here with us. Well, the team that drowned in deep waters off the eastern coast of the island is being remembered as a hero. 17-year-old Rogelin Carpello was swimming with friends last Friday when the waters got too rough. Carpella's sister telling us the teen was helping others get out to safety before being swept away. A young life taken too soon. Family and friends of 17-year-old Rajlin Carpella mourning her death. Leanne Rosario is her older sister. Every person who's come out to support us, who's talked about her, has always mentioned how much of a kind person she was. And she really is. Um, she could light up the room with just one smile. And she was the kind of person to give you compliments randomly, even if she didn't know you, just to make you feel good. She knows how hard it is to not feel good about yourself. She was giving and she was forgiving. The Tizen High School senior drowned last Friday while at an outing with friends near Gregorio Paris Park in Manila. In her final moments, Rajlin sending this photo to her older sister. She is now being remembered for her swift action. My sister was a hero for what she did. She and her friends were out in the water too far, 50 feet, and all of them started to go under the water and drown. She was holding on to her bubby, otherwise known as Kaylee J. Carpella, who was like her, her, like they were one person, her soulmate. And they were holding on to her, trying to pull her into the water, out of the water. But she knew that if she didn't let go, that there would be two funerals. So she let go of Kaylee, and she let the water take her. I'm so sorry. Take your time. After that, they tried to find her in the water, but they couldn't recover her body. From there, they, they texted me telling me there was an emergency. And by the time they found her, she, she was already gone. It took about an hour for first responders to find her body. Rosario says they were getting ready for her little sister's senior prom and graduation. She really wanted to be the belle of the ball mm -hmm. in a big sparkly ball gown and the headpiece, crown and wings. Instead, she is now making funeral arrangements. Rosario is hosting an online fundraiser to help with the cost of Rogelin's cremation. Her remains to be placed in a necklace that will be worn by the person she loved the most and to help offset the cost for loved ones to travel to Guam for her funeral. As she remembers Rajlin as the kindest soul you could ever meet, Rosario shares this message for her sister. I'm so proud of the woman that you became, and I know you were excited for everything that we were going to give you, but just know that your life was not just something that was given to KK. You saved her, and... We're going to do our best to be there for her, for you. And we're going to be strong. So you don't have to worry about us anymore. Our sincere condolences to Rajalin's loved ones. To help them out, you can find the link right now on KUAM.com. Additionally, officials say a high surf advisory that was in place that day. A high risk of rip currents remains in effect for the rest of the week. Inexperienced swimmers are being cautioned to stay out of the water. 
Another news, an investigator with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration arrived on island to investigate last Friday's death at the Port Authority of Guam. The victim worked for a private company and was at the top of a gantry crane when the accident occurred, leading to his death. OSHA now looking into how it all played out. The man's name has not yet been released. It was midday Friday. First responders with Guam Fire were called to assist in recovering the man's body. The U.S. Coast Guard also responding. Military officials telling us the portion of the crane that fell into the water posed no pollution. Resulting in zero interruptions to port operations. A man is arrested in a stabbing reported in Jigo Friday. 26 year old Kyle Murray is charged with aggravated assault along with a special allegation for having a deadly weapon and two counts of family violence. Court documents state Murray attacked a man known to him before stabbing him repeatedly with a knife. Murray then allegedly punched a woman known to him who tried to stop the attack while trying to gouge out her eyes and bit biting her. The man rushed to GMH, his condition not yet known. Now during his arrest, Murray started to cry as he allegedly told officers the man, quote, deserved it. The people have spoken in the Northern Marianas and they want change. The independent gubernatorial team of Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios and Mayor David Apatang, now Governor-elect and Lieutenant Governor-elect, after securing a wide margin of victory over Republicans Governor Ralph Torres and Senator Vinny Sablon on Friday's runoff. Regional correspondent Tomas Manguatnia reports. People have spoken and we're humbled by it. The Independent and Democratic Coalition delivering a new governor and lieutenant governor of the CNMI. 7,077 voters bringing Arno Palacios and David Apatang a victory over incumbent Republican Governor Ralph Torres and Senator Vinny Sablon, who received 6,017 votes. This uh, campaign has been a very uh, challenging, very long. Uh, it's a lot of hard work and uh, we want to thank our committees, executive committee, on our supporters that have been uh, going around with us. The first time in Commonwealth history, an unrecognized party sits in the executive seat with a coalition that gives them control of the House and Senate. The sitting lieutenant governor will be moving down the hall into his former running mate's office with his promise of making the Commonwealth's financial books public as he works to rebuild trust. I believe the Commonwealth and the people in this community needs to heal. And Dave and I will help facilitate that healing. Republicans offered a clear concession over the weekend. Now that we feel this, I told him, I said, God, we always have to respect the will of the people. Mm -hmm. And we always have to accept what God has for us. Governor Torres in a press release said he spoke with Palacios and come January, Torres says Palacios will be his governor too, and he will give him the respect both he and the position deserves. The Commonwealth Election Commission is accepting remaining absentee ballots until December 9 and is expected to certify the results on the same day. Tomas Maglonia for KUAM News on Saipan. Well, overpayments and documentary deficiencies, some of the issues highlighted in a recent Guam OPA audit performed on the coronavirus relief fund. This includes the small business relief program and the pandemic assistance grant and the rent assistance grant. Public Auditor B.J. Cruz noting $56.7 thousand dollars in question costs and a total financial impact of $426.7 thousand. Among the issues, $9.5 thousand in overpayments were found on four awards granted. One applicant was paid twice before duplicate payments were returned. $14.4 thousand was awarded to an applicant who was ineligible and awards totaling $15.5 thousand were awarded without required current lease agreements. Cruz includes the Guam Economic concludes rather the Guam Economic Development Authority generally complied with the criteria, acknowledged the weaknesses and initiated improvements. Still to come on your news leader, the holiday season rolls on into Cyber Monday. Our Mitsuki Hirayama with a report on the virtual steals and deals as many search for that perfect gift to put under your Christmas tree. And the Fiesta Tour takes over Ganya Heights. Daniel Perez with a look as more than 100 TikTok influencers from Japan joined in on the celebration. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Howdy, folks. Nobody loves a Guam potluck more than I do. That's why I always bring my world-famous chicken served any way you like it. 
original recipe, extra crispy tenders, Kentucky Fried Wings, and more. Hmm. All right. And nothing completes a meal like KFC's signature sides. Hot mashed potatoes with gravy, coleslaw, and a flaky biscuit. The world's favorite chicken, right here on the island, and only at KFC Guam. Whoops. Well, it is finger looking good. Calvo Select Care's comprehensive medical provider network offers our members choice and access to quality facilities locally in Asia, Hawaii, and the continental United States. We provide our members several wellness programs and healthy options to improve their overall health status. Calvo Select Care, healthcare that's always there for you. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. Are you ready for more? Introducing GTA 5G. More speed. Experience fast 5G speeds while streaming video, gaming online, or downloading files. More reliable. Guam's most reliable network with more 5G coverage than the competitors. More value. All GTA postpaid wireless customers get 5G access for free. GTA 5G. 5G done right. Any day in December, Pizza Hut can give to you five breadsticks. For my triple treat, three layers deep, ten cinnabon mini rolls to eat, and the pizza plus another pizza. It's a pizza miracle! The triple treat box only from Pizza Hut. No one else pizzas the hut. What you need to know from the Northern Marianas. Follow KUAM Cinemai on Instagram for the latest regional headlines. Welcome back. The biggest sales of the year continues. Today is Cyber Monday and island residents taking advantage of the hot deals. Mitsuki Hiriyama has more. If you missed out on Black Friday, have no fear. Cyber Monday is here. It's one of the biggest online shopping days of the year. A perfect time to get Christmas presents for all your loved ones. I speak to some island residents to see if they're taking advantage of the yearly cyber deals. Here's what they had to say. I mostly shop online, so I don't really go to the, the stores out here because it's all crazy and the lines and everything. Carlin Ariego says she prefers doing her Christmas shopping on the World Wide Web to beat the lines in stores. Another island resident, Louis Tonoro, echoes those sentiments. I avoid the crowds. That's the, that's the biggest one for me. As KUAM recently reported, the crowds were out in force last week on Black Friday to get a head start on the holiday rush. Barrow Hokog was among those crowds. I already did most of my shopping for Black Friday, so pretty much. But some, like Rama Omwir, prefer to do their Christmas shopping in the comfort of their homes. Uh, for the safety, you know, the, maybe because of the COVID, people will do something. For those like stars. eBay. Many are already snagging hot deals off Amazon, Best Buy, Walmart, and more, where prices are dropping up to 50% off. And for those doing their holiday shopping online, the U.S. Postal Service recommends you place your orders by December 12th for Priority Mail and December 19th for Express Mail to get your Christmas presents under the tree in time. Mitsuki Hariyama, KUAM News. Thanks, Mitsuki, for that report. Well, special weapons and tactics, the work is in the name. But there's a new breed of SWAT officers being trained. KUAM got a first-hand look at the training and the intense scenarios they go through to ultimately keep us safe. They are the men in green. SWAT training, 11 Guam police officers and one Port Authority police officer getting ready to be among the best of the best. Once we come out, um, everything's high risk, right? So we... Tra the, the cycle now, we're training them to be basically 100% better than the criminals out there. The reason is because we train so that we don't make a mistake to better the community and to protect lives and property. Eddie Tiamzon is one of the instructors. He's been with GPD SWAT for eight years of his career. For our calls, call-outs are mostly like hostage situations. Uh, we do help out with rescue as well, so rescue and uh, recovery with fire. Um, anything basically uh, high, high risk, um, SWAT is activated uh, from patrol. A response that can at most times be unpredictable. K 
KUAM was invited to join in on today's lesson. GPD officer Benjamin Cruz, who has been on the force for nine years, is part of my team. I've always wanted to be a SWAT operator since I started uh, the Guam Police Department. Um, it's a fortunate events. I was deployed during the past two uh, cycles. This is my time now and I got to seize the opportunity. Our group doing what's called a vehicle assault. We have to make the best out of this training. I mean, the people of Guam depend on us. We're basically the, the last line of defense before basic martial law. So it, you don't expect anything less but challenging when it comes to SWAT training. It's a challenge that even GPD officer Nate Lorenzo was up for after already serving four years. It's really good training. Great uh, instructors and uh, my side commissioners. It's a great Good training. It seems tough. I was out there only half an hour. And it's... Indeed it is. It takes heart. It takes heart? Yes. And it's heart that you're giving for your island? Yes. The training is no joke when preparing on how best to deal with violent criminals and make it out alive. But these men are taking on the risks for more than just those on the other end of the call. My family, um, my kids, gives me that, that motivation to, to push harder, push further, uh, faster so that I could... Uh, keep them safe as well as all the other families out there safe. What motivates me? Uh, my psycho mates, my family, and just that will to uh, serve and protect the community. My family definitely motivates me. My brother's in blue. Um, they motivate us, and uh, motivates me and motivates everybody around us. A motivation to be the next team of SWAT members as more officers get ready to retire. Well, the Ganya Heights Fiesta to return to spread the holiday spirit over the weekend. Some special guests, social media influencers from Japan joined in on the festivities. And let's just say if you are a TikTok fan, you might recognize them. Our Daniel Perez was there for the celebration. A good old island fiesta made its return after two long years. Ganya Heights was in full celebration mode yesterday for their fiesta at Fort Santa Agata. The event was festive all around and turned even more lively with the appearance of more than 100 TikTok influencers from Japan. They were brought in to share an experience to holiday spirit. Guam Visitors Bureau President and CEO Carl Gutierrez spoke more on the social media influencers. We have come together to bring out 120 TikTokers who they, by themselves are worth about 40 million directly. But when they get back there, they'll be propagating to 100 million viewers. We brought them here and we put them together with the Agan Heights Fiesta and the GBB program Fiesta to give them the flavor of Guam food-wise, hospitality-wise. You can see the camaraderie right now, getting people to sit together and interacting. So they're very, very happy. KOAM caught up with a couple of the influencers who expressed their joy in being able to experience what Guam has to offer. Homie is a lifestyle influencer from Japan. Guam was the place that I really wanted to go. And I used to live in the U.S. And my friends back there really loved Guam. And that's why I came here. And for the TikTok. I love it. I love how we get to talk to people like who lives here. I love it. And the food. <laughs> I've never had this Guam food. Fashion influencer Ami Mariyama says she's been to Guam before and is back to get a taste of more of Guam's hospitality. I like the personality for the people because they're so kind to us. They have a hospitality, so that's the part what I, I like. Bringing the influencers on island is part of GVB's plan to entice more young Japanese tourists to visit the island. GVB says this is the biggest group they brought in from Japan. The Japanese social media stars arrived on Guam on Saturday and will be here until the 29th, while they'll be engaged in various activities to promote the island. Daniel Perez, KUAM News. All right, Daniel, thank you. Great job on that report. Now for a look at your world here at home. Here's a view captured from outside of our Harmon studios of the beautiful mellow sunset on Sunday, a beautiful way to end the weekend. The Guam National Weather Service predicting Tuesday will bring more clouds in our skies, a 30% chance of rain scattered throughout our area. My name is Leonza Selvage and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Punilin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief 
that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit, so when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful to the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh, oh. streaming TV. Switch between live TV and your favorite streaming apps with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch your shows and multiple devices all at the same time, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, streaming TV. Oh yeah, we need these, no? You know what we do need? Got your friends, hot with everything! absolutely needed these. Introducing Taco Bell's new seven-layer nacho fries. For employers, workers, and those involved in construction safety, join this free residential construction safety and injury prevention training available in November and December. Please visit BIAHawaii.org or call 808-629-7505 for more. When you're built for tailgating, you're built for winning. Winning at storage. Winning at parking. Winning at technology. Winning at comfort. Winning at... Winning. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I'll get to some rugby news on our U18 boys and girls team wrapping up play in Singapore. But first off, youth basketball highlights from the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. Check it out. Guam taking on Samoa for the bronze medal with a FIBA 15 under Oceania Championship at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. Guam outscored Samoa in the second quarter, 21-10. To lead 38-21 at the half, Team Guam went on to win 78-69. Noah Cruz led all scorers in the win with 18 points. Teammate Noah Tenorio added 16. In the girls' bronze medal game, Samoa defeated Guam 92-50. Samoa led by double digits throughout every quarter. L'Oreal Hiko led Samoa in the win with 18 points. Maria Paulino and Gia Peters led Team Guam with nine points apiece. Samoa won the battle of the boards, pulling down 68 to Guam's 53 rebounds. Guam struggled from the three-point line, only hitting eight of 37 shot attempts. Our girls did shoot well from the free throw line, hitting 14 of 22 shots. In rugby news, congratulations to the Guam Rugby Club's U18 girls team for winning the cup at the 2022 13th Centaurs International Mini and Youth Rugby Tournament in Singapore. The girls beat TRC Medusa's 17-0 for the championship. Guam's U18 boys team placed second in the tournament, losing 7-5 to the Saints. Our boys played tough, holding it down with no subs, grinding it out to the very end. In track and field news, World Athletics, the international governing body for the sport of athletics, has named the Guam Track and Field Association as one of six finalists for the Member Federation Award. The winner will be announced on World Athletics social media platforms in early December as part of the World Athletics Awards 2022. The island's performance at the U18 and U20 Oceania Championships, as well as the Pacific Games, put Guam's name in the mix. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.
This burger looked at one slice of melted cheese and said, more cheese. It looked at pickles and said, also onions. It wanted to be more than hot. It wanted to be juicy. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. If you thought one napkin for the Quarter Pounder with cheese was enough, it's not enough. Can I make that amount worth right now? Mom, what is it? Can I get new basketball shoes? We'll see. Can I please have $20 for my field trip? I don't know. Can I go to my friend's house after school? We're all trying our best to make ends meet. The governor's child care programs are helping businesses and working families care for Guam's kids. This ad is paid for with funds administered by the Department of Public Health and Social Services. Visit guamchildcare.com to apply today. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Tomorrow is Giving Tuesday and the KUM Care Force takes generosity on the road with the Giving Tuesday Bus Tour 2022. Giving Tuesday is a global generosity movement, unleashing the power of people and organizations to transform the communities and their world. Here's more. Get ready as Giving Tuesday will kick off the generosity season this year by inspiring people to give back tomorrow, November 29th and throughout the year. Giving Tuesday was launched in 2012 as a simple idea to create a day that encourages people to do good. Over the past 10 years, this idea has grown into a global movement that inspires hundreds of millions of people to give, collaborate, and celebrate generosity. KUAM Care Force, a community service initiative of KUAM Communications, is once again participating in this global movement as an ambassador for Guam. The KUAM Care Force's mission? To serve our community through building awareness and advocacy for important causes, campaigns, and organizations that serve those in need. For this year's activities, Giving Tuesday co-ambassador Betty Ann Guerrero is excited, saying with the assistance of Kloppenberg Enterprises and other partners such as Papa John's, we're taking our annual giving event on the road. Adding we'll be gathering donations from leaders, schools, and businesses, celebrating nonprofit organizations, and giving back to those in need throughout the day. And joining the Giving Tuesday bus tour this year as Giving Tuesday spark leaders will be youth leaders from different high schools around Guam. Remember, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. People demonstrate generosity in many ways on Giving Tuesday out, showing up for an issue or people we care about, or giving to causes we care about, every act of generosity counts. If you want to join the KUAM Care Force Giving Tuesday initiative, email promotions at KUAM.com. For more details about the Giving Tuesday movement, visit the Giving Tuesday website at givingtuesday.org or KUAM.com slash careforce. And make sure to follow on Instagram at Giving Tuesday at Giving Tuesday Spark and KOAM Care Force. And don't forget, hashtag Giving Tuesday on Twitter. Finally tonight, your Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club shout outs submitted on KOAM.com. Happy birthday on November 28th to Matias and to our youngest flag football star in the family. Happy birthday number five. You are affectionately known as Bull. 
Keep up the good work and may your future always be safe, bright, and fun. That happy birthday on a football day. That's awesome. We love you to eternity and beyond, and your family says they're very, very proud of you. And happy belated birthday wishes going out to Teddy Timonglow, who was born on the 22nd. Happy birthday, Teddy, from your loving wife, Lori, who says have a blessed and beautiful day. And she sends you all of her love. And Jarena Julia Blas, who was born on the 26th, celebrates birthday number 28. Happy birthday with many more blessings on this special day. Love mom, dad, sis Nessa, Matt, Noah, and especially Mario, and your three beautiful kids, Ashton, Emery, and Orie. And that's your Monday Primetime Show. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. Stay safe and good night. KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Pacific Points, Do More, Get More, and Calvo Enterprises, Inc. <laughs> Here we are. For those of us who are enjoying football, a great, great weekend of football. Yay, Michigan! We beat Ohio State. And for those of you who are just joining us from the Raiders game, you can exhale now. Really, really good way to end that. But this is the hot spot. We are here in Guam. Let's go. The Menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant. Always open, always local. And Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh garden bar. Submitted for your approval this morning, a public hearing for a bill has been set for tomorrow afternoon. That's on Bill 360. Giving Tuesday is tomorrow, and we're going to tell you about the initiative and how you can participate. We're going to go to the CNMI, where Tomas has more on the gubernatorial runoff that took place, and your island weather forecast and what is going on with the Towers for Toys over at the Micronesia Mall. Well, a public hearing on a ban right off the bat that would ban open burning and detonation on the island is set to play, take place on Tuesday afternoon. Bill 360, introduced by one Senator Sabina Perez, aims to protect our island from the toxic exposure due to open burning and open detonation of hazardous waste and prohibiting the importation and transshipment of materials to Guam. Such acts, according to the bill, are based on dirty technology with, quote, virtual no emission, virtually no emission controls, resulting in the hazardous substances such as lead, which has been banned on Guam since 1990, and highly carcinogenic substances such as strontium and uranium. A public hearing is at 1.30 downtown. You can submit oral or written testimony by calling 989-2968 or email office at senatorperez.org. The holiday shopping weekend, if you didn't know and what rock were you living under, is still going strong in both stores and online. And yesterday, many smaller retailers saw a boost in sales thanks to Small Business Saturday. Here's more. From Massachusetts to Michigan to California, Americans were on a big shopping spree Saturday to buy small. We actually had a line out the door. It's been a whirlwind and it's just like a whirlwind of joy. According to Bankrate.com, more Americans plan to shop on Small Business Saturday than on Black Friday. Even President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris joined in. Half of America's workforce works at a small business or runs a small business. so. I think we really want to always support them. Business owners were grateful to see customers filling their stores after what many say has been a tough year. Oh, you're all set. Nicole Panettiere owns the Brass Owl Boutique in Queens, New York. Between inflation that's hit our prices, inflation that's hit the customers' lives, labor costs have gone up, our supply costs have gone up, so it really has been the perfect storm of a difficult year. Big retailers are seeing a boost this weekend, too, with more than 166 million Americans expected to do holiday shopping. That's 8 million more than last year, and two-thirds of those shoppers plan to visit stores in person. Online shopping is a big deal that sometimes people just want to come out and meet the people making the products and seeing how they're made, ask questions. Now the spree continues online. More than 60 million Americans plan to shop on Cyber Monday. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Well, your leftover turkey may still be in the fridge, but for many, the attention turns now to your Christmas tree. Kind of like this one right here. And moving them around so they're very uh, artfully organized. Like so many of our favorite things, inflation has pushed up the price. Here is more about what you need to know to decorate your house with traditional Christmas fare. Can we do that one? <laughs> the holiday rush is on for Christmas trees. In Los Angeles and cities nationwide, thousands of people are picking out and paying more for their traditional tree. About how much more do you think you're seeing now? Um, 
maybe 20 or 30. The average cost of a real tree was nearly $70 last year. Now experts say that same spruce, fir, or pine could set you back about $80 to $100. Not enough to stop some shoppers. We're Oregonians, so we have to have a real tree. Right. Okay. Oregon oh. is the nation's top supplier of holiday trees. Many growers, including Jeremy Schultz, say they have to raise prices because drought, wildfires, and the higher cost of seed, fertilizer, and labor leave them no choice. People don't realize how much work goes into growing a Christmas tree the rest of the year. You know, your six-foot tree is anywhere from six to 12 years old. So, you know, that's six to 12 years of, of work. Demand is expected to be strong this season, but experts don't predict any shortages of real or artificial trees. For those who get festive with a fake, gone are the supply chain snarls of Christmas past, and many retailers have a surplus. The thing about the fake trees, you now you can have them every year, but also getting a real tree, it's keeping the tradition alive. Americans are expected to spend about $6 billion on Christmas trees this year. And whether you assemble your artificial tree or pick one off the lot, experts recommend getting it early so you can get the size and style you want. Don Yabakis, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, tomorrow's Giving Tuesday in the KUM Care Force. We'll take generosity on the road with our Giving Tuesday bus tour. It's a global generosity movement unleashing the power of people and organizations transforming communities and their world. Here is a sneak peek of what you can expect to see tomorrow. Get ready as Giving Tuesday will kick off the generosity season this year by inspiring people to give back tomorrow, November 29th and throughout the year. Giving Tuesday was launched in 2012 as a simple idea to create a day that encourages people to do good. Over the past 10 years, this idea has grown into a global movement that inspires hundreds of millions of people to give, collaborate, and celebrate generosity. KUAM Care Force, a community service initiative of KUAM Communications, is once again participating in this global movement as an ambassador for Guam. The KUAM Care Force's mission? to serve our community through building awareness and advocacy for important causes, campaigns, and organizations that serve those in need. For this year's activities, Giving Tuesday co-ambassador Betty Ann Guerrero is excited, saying with the assistance of Kloppenberg Enterprises and other partners such as Papa John's, we're taking our annual giving event on the road. Adding we'll be gathering donations from leaders, schools, and businesses, celebrating nonprofit organizations and giving back to those in need throughout the day. And joining the Giving Tuesday bus tour this year as Giving Tuesday Spark leaders will be youth leaders from different high schools around Guam. Remember, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. People demonstrate generosity in many ways on Giving Tuesday, whether it's helping a neighbor or a stranger out, showing up for an issue or people we care about, or giving to causes we care about, every act of generosity counts. If you want to join the KUAM Care Force Giving Tuesday initiative, email promotions at KUAM.com. For more details about the Giving Tuesday movement, visit the Giving Tuesday website at givingtuesday.org or KUAM.com slash careforce. And make sure to follow on Instagram at Giving Tuesday, at Giving Tuesday Spark, and KUAM Care Force. And don't forget, hashtag Giving Tuesday on Twitter. All right, everybody, it's time for a quick break. While we check in with Tomas, who is up north, who is going to recap what happened this weekend in the Sea of Mine. My name is Lisa Tahaji. I'm from the village of Yamatic. I lost my job during COVID. For one year, I was staying with a family member, but I knew I had to find a place to stay. I was desperately looking for a home. I found out about the Relief Center from the Governor Lou and Lieutenant Governor Josh's Facebook page. I wasn't sure if they could help, but I thought I'd take a chance. I walked into the center and the staff were so understanding and compassionate, they helped me. Within a week, through their assistance, I was called to sign a lease agreement. My kids and I now have a roof over our heads, and I'm grateful for the help of the administration and the Relief Center. For anyone who needs any government assistance, I encourage you to visit the Relief Center. They are there to help. 
Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Puniland from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit, so when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful for the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for child care? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. KUAM News, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. All right, welcome back to the Hot Spot, everybody. It was quite the buzz if you are into NMI News this past weekend as our Tomas Mangonia is stationed up in Saipan where it was a quite the active time with the gubernatorial runoff. He stands by right now with a recap. Off of date, Tomas. Yes, Jason, the CNMI voters voted for change. A different administration will be sworn in in just over a month. The independent can tandem of Arnold Palacios and David Apatang garnered 7,000 77 votes, while the incumbent Republican, Republican governor, Ralph Torres, and his running mate, Senator Vinny Sablon, garnered 6,017 votes, so about over a 1,000 uh, vote margin there, uh, separating the two. Uh, I'm reporting outside of the governor's office where the sitting lieutenant governor, Arno Palacios, will be moving just down the hall to a different office in over a month as he is now governor-elect and the Saipan mayor is now lieutenant governor-elect. Of course, we are still waiting for a few of those absentee ballots that have until December 9 to arrive, and the Commonwealth Election Commission says that they expect to certify the election results December 9 as well. Uh, but uh, the margin uh, indicating that the path towards victory is in the favor of the independents. And Jason, uh, it is also a historic win, as it is the first time an unrecognized party, that being the independent party, uh, is now uh, in the executive seat or will be sworn in in the next uh, few weeks. Over the weekend, uh, actually early that morning on Saturday around 4 a.m., uh, I got a chance to go over to the uh, gathering site, the watch party that the independents held. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Arno Palacios uh, telling me, now Governor-elect telling me that it is a time to heal. And actually the independents will be hosting a press conference at two o'clock today we're expected to hear who is a mem um, who are members of their transition team, what the next few weeks look like moving forward, uh, and we will be streaming that press conference live on KOA on Facebook, so you can get the very latest information as we get it. I did want to share uh, the statement, uh, a part of the statement that the sitting governor, Ralph Torres, released over the weekend as they conceded to the Palacios Apatang team. Uh, this is from Governor Ralph Torres. He tells us. I have spoken with Governor-elect Arnold Palacios over the weekend and we shared a good, honest and light-hearted conversation about our campaigns, our relationship and the path forward 
for our Commonwealth. Torres continues to say he and Lieutenant Governor-elect David Apatang ran a hard campaign, but through it all come January when Governor Palacios takes his oath of office, he will be my governor and I will give him the respect both he and the position deserves. And so, uh, Jason, by all indications, this will be a smooth transition of power. Uh, I was just watching a live stream from uh, Senator Vinny Sablon uh, yesterday where he says uh, we must accept the outcome. So the Republican team there are giving a clear concession and we will bring you the latest as we wait to hear from the independent team as they prepare to transition. Again, that live press conference will be streamed on KOM Facebook at 2 o'clock, Jason. All right, Tomas Manglonia doing his dutiful job up there in the CMI. Thanks so much, Tomas. All right, back to news about Guam. We have a break coming up, but before that, we give you a look at News Bites, what's happening around the island. On a Friday the 25th, Nestor Katinge was given the new keys to a brand new Kia Seltos. Members of the GMH Volunteers Association and Triple J presented him with the new keys to his new vehicle, which is a grand prize during their annual Thanksgiving raffle. We love that. That took place at GPO. Amplify is a Guam-based community organization and will be hosting their fourth Giving Tree project this year. Donations of new unused clothes, toiletries, and gifts for youth will benefit Catholic Social Services and Sanctuary. You can make sure to check out their Facebook and Instagram accounts at, at Amplify Guam to register. The Rotary Club of Northern Guam made donations of snacks to some of the island's senior centers, so congratulations and well done to those very fine folks. And last Friday, the Guahan Lions Club Hunger Committee donated drinks and other goods to the ministry to the homeless. Good to see our fellow Guamanians doing what they can for our people here. All right, stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to talk about weather real, real quick. And I want to catch up with Landon Adla because he and his twin brother are over at the Micronesia Mall. They are building structures, towers, towers for toys. They are helping the Marines do their mission to give young children a very, very happy Christmas. And we go out to the Micronesia Mall next. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. When you're built for tailgating, you're built for winning. Winning at storage. Winning at parking. Winning at technology. Winning at comfort. Winning at winning. Mobile offers a new and convenient way to fuel your vehicle. Pay gas and go. No need to line up inside the store. Press preset. Enter whole dollar amount without decimals. Press loyalty ID and enter your mobile number or insert smiles card. Insert and remove payment card or tap contactless credit card. Begin fueling. And don't forget to grab your receipt. Pay gas and go. It's that easy. All right, everybody, Hotspot continues, and it is Monday, so we are going to tell you what's up with the weather, and we have an extra special backdrop for you. Towers, and these aren't any, just any towers. These are made with Lincoln Logs. They are built with love and with the craftsmanship of the not one, but two-time world record holders, the Adlet twins, Brandon and Landon. Let's go now into the KOM News Zoom room, where Landon is standing by right now at the Towers for Tots project, of course, that benefits our friends in the United States Marine Corps, where we also have Gunnery Sergeant Ruben Tant joining there. So Landon and Gunny, half a day and happy holidays to you both. Half a day and happy holidays. I hope you had a great happy Thanksgiving since we met earlier last week from Florida and a Merry oh, Christmas yeah. coming up soon. Yeah. Can you give us a real quick shot, Landon? I want to talk about the weather real, real quick, but those towers are behind you. I, I just thought you guys were building like these structures of wood. You guys have also decked them out with holiday fare, so they look beautiful. Yeah, that's correct. We got Christmas lights up here, and we light it up when it's uh, evening time. Uh, we have about 
1300 LED Christmas lights in the tower. So we have the Empire State Building here, complete ah. with the Laddie Stone. I hope you can make out the Laddie Stone just fine. Oh, um, yeah. But this is the Empire State Building. It's a full 15 feet, 10 inches in height. And then behind that is what we're trying to make with Lincoln Logs, the Marina Bay Sands Hotel from Singapore. Oh, very so nice. we are. We have the ship, we put the ship on last night around 7 p.m. And we have maybe one more level to put up on the ship. And then that will be all complete. But this is the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. And tonight we will assemble our team and hopefully get a third tower constructed by close of business today. So three Very towers. Cool. We have a lot of blocks left over. Obviously, we've been collecting for quite a while. So we have a lot of blocks to work with. And I actually got a box today in the mail from one of our guys in Minnesota who custom makes these blocks, these white notch blocks. And so. Oh yeah, man, he, you're, you're making me cringe when you do that. Please, <laughs> please don't take, please don't disassemble it on my behalf. They are not glued. They are just stacked up and notched together. But yeah, this guy. The oh, you're giving me the gooses. Ship them to us. It, it can wobble a little bit, but we don't want to shake it too much. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't, don't prove that. I, I absolutely believe it. And you, and you know what? I know the, the, the good people of the Empire State New York, they really appreciate that Empire State uh, building recreation, especially because the Jets won today. Last week, the Giants, oh, not so much, because I butt handed to them on Thanksgiving. Well, that is great. And speaking of the Giants, if anybody wants to host another tower, if they will provide the scissor lifts for us, I have plans to build a 25-foot scaled Empire State building. So that would go right up to the top of the atrium, and we can make it a little bit larger. So if anybody wants to be a part of that, we have plans ready to go. Very cool. So you can get in touch with us. Make sure to DM us. We'll connect you with Landon, and uh, we will we will get you there. Uh, good to go. Well, Landon, tell you what, we, we're going to get to the weather in just a moment. But since you've got Gunny next to us and everything, um, maybe if you can, if you can ask him because I know you're on your AirPods right now. So Gunny, um, what have you been able to see? Because you obviously came out in your Class A uniform, and you know what does the figurative and literal structures, you know, celebrating the holidays and people coming out and volunteering, erecting these to help you in your mission. What does, what does that mean to you? This a broader project with the Towers for Tots. What does this mean to you as far as the holiday season, bringing people together and volunteers? Yeah, so a lot of the times when people have a Toys for Tots campaign, they always like to attribute to the amount of toys donated. For me, I feel like it's more important to have more awareness about the program. And things like Tower for Tots definitely gets us uh, more publicity. It gets us in front of the community. And every year as we have Tots, those numbers will naturally correlate and grow with, you know, the amount of toys that we get each and every year. Very good. Okay, now, of course, Gunny, you, you are someone by the nature of what you do, you know, your branch of service, you guys, you know, know about building really, really impressive structures. But what was your first reaction when you first walked into the Micronesia Mall and saw those towers going up? What was your first reaction when you came into the mall and saw the towers going up as far as your time with Toys for Tots? Um, a lot of fear. I, whenever you jiggled it, I was like, oh, my God, it's going to fall. I'm, See, I'm not crazy. <laughs> so I don't topple anything. Um, but, no, it, it's really great, uh, especially what you and your brother and your staff has done for us uh, with getting toys and just spreading the message about Toys for Thoughts and choosing to support us this year. So it's greatly appreciated. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, we definitely have fun with this. And, of course, the drop boxes, we're going to have the drop boxes out here how long? Correct. So the drop box will be here all the way until December 9th. So that Friday is when we'll be picking it up. And then across the island, you have a over 100 different businesses. So they could go to our Facebook page at Marine Corps Base Camp Laws, and they can see all the different locations. But the box here will be here all the way until December 9th. Okay, so to find another drop box, Marine Corps Base Camp Laws? Correct. Toys for Tots? Uh, just Marine Corps Base Camp Laws. And okay. then on there, they'll see it as a pin post with all the different locations. All right. All right. Very well done. So, Gunny, if, if I may say so as a civilian and everything, Semper Fi, you are doing an absolutely fantastic job out there. Semper Fi, you're doing a fantastic job out here. Hurrah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, Landon, uh, let, let me ask you, because you and your twin brother, uh, Brandon, have been out there, you know, from the early morning, and you guys stay late, We know, and you, we know you, you appreciate your handiwork, but what has the feedback been from the public walking by, or, you know, what questions have people asked? Yeah, there's always a lot of questions about, what are these? What are these toys? People have never seen them before, especially some of the younger generation. The older folks out here, the Manamco, they, they're familiar with the Lincoln Logs, they probably grew up with them decades ago, um, but 
there's been a lot of inspiration. A lot of people recognize these logs from the Tower for Humanity event back in June. And so this is just a reprise of that, but with more blocks. And so people are excited to see this because we kept the tower up for only two days after construction back in June. This one's gonna be up till the end of the year. So all the way through December 31st to January 1st, uh, maybe a little bit longer, uh, but these towers will be here to stand for quite a while until an earthquake shakes them down. Hopefully that does no, not happen. No, 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 no. Or next year, but, <laughs> but yeah, there's so much interest. There's so much inspiration, especially from like the young kids to even high school kids and college age to the older folks, a lot of interest and curiosity about that. And that's what we really wanted to inspire here and uh, to create out here, just a, a sense of interest and community working together. Yeah, well, what a wonderful way to give back to the community. So you have, ab you have absolutely inspired. And may maybe Santa Claus has like an extra, like an extra tube of Gorilla Glue in his, uh, in his sack for you when he, when he comes by and everything. Well, tell you what, you know, I've worked in the Micronesian Mall a number of times when I was a kid, and I'm, I'm transitioning now to the actual weather, right? Because I do know, uh, you know, the beautiful windows above you, when it rains on Guam, it makes this really nice, you know, sheeting, uh, nice color of blue, and it really casts like this amazing um, uh, visuals down uh, in the atriums there. So, Gorgeous blue skies right now. Incredible island weather. But is there any of the wet stuff in our future landing? Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day today. We're just only a few spotty showers. Nothing bad as far as weather. We are watching a couple of tropical disturbances across the region, but they are deep to our south across Micronesia. And none of those are expected to uh, develop into anything formal or significant in our region. So that's the good news. But we do have a little bit of a, a small area of weather that's going to be pushing through the Mariana Islands later tonight and to tomorrow so we're going to see a uptick in showers late tonight tomorrow morning but nothing oh, significant. What a shot. yeah we're not looking at any um, significant weather impacts but we are going to get a good taste of the windy season later this week as trade winds will gradually uh increase with a trade wind surge around midweek into the weekend so watch out for that as far as how strong the winds are going to be uh strengthening Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It will be windy out there. We do have a high risk of rip currents along east-facing reefs. So that's everywhere up from Inarahan to First Beach, Telefopo. We, there was a couple of rescues at Jeff's Pirates Cove. Kudos to Jeff's team over there for those rescues. But this is a season for hazardous surf and large waves, especially on the east side of the island. So a good taste of the trade wind season coming up later this week. Okay. So... Good island weather forecasting, good vibes there at the Micronesian Mall over in Dededo. And man, I got to tell you, that is, you know, kudos to your camera person because that is an absolutely beautiful shot. And we really get a sense of scale about the, uh, you know, man, you're, you're making me miss Manhattan, man. It's been a while since yeah. I've been back in New York City, <laughs> but oh, let's go Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are ready to build again. And of course, any good cause we are. Uh, happy to partner with because we just want to build blocks. I, I have too many blocks to build at home anymore. Um, so if we have a venue, a good charitable uh, uh, organization to work with, we are on board and ready to play. Okay. Now, now as the owner of two world records, Landon, I got to ask you, what are you using as, a, do you have like some sort of official guide like to building the, um, you know, especially when it comes to something as, as world famous as the, uh, as the Empire State Building, is there something you can download or do you actually, are you basing this on, you know, uh, on your own interpretation of it? Like, how do you actually map out the construction of this? It's very much a wild, educated guess. So I've got notebooks of pages and pages of calculations, math work, uh, blueprints on a gridded uh, paper where I'm trying to block these things to take an actual architectural construction and then block it into Lincoln log form that we can build the columns with. So I spend a lot of time, I'm studying the buildings, the architecture, like the Empire State Building. This is a very difficult building because 